can I build e-commerce websites inside of Framer? Well, today the answer is yes, because in this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can connect your Shopify site to Framer so you can build e-commerce websites finally inside of Framer with zero code. Let's go. So first things first, let's open up Framer and let's go to plugins and let's open the Frameship plugin. Now inside here, we've got everything we need to build our e-commerce website. If we press on build, you'll notice we've got sections, components, and templates. Now by far, templates are the easiest way to start, but if you wanna build something a little bit more custom, you can use sections or our library of all our components, which is everything you need to make your website functional for e-commerce. Now, whether you're starting with a template or not, what you'll learn in this video is still everything you need to get started. So the first thing we need to do is actually sync our Shopify store with our Framer project. So if I go to my Framer CMS and go back to plugins and open the Frameship plugin, we'll be prompted to create a new collection. Now you can call this whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it my store and we'll click on create. Now we'll be prompted to connect our Shopify store. So I'll press on connect and you'll notice we'll need a couple of different details. Now, quick heads up, in the future, this is just gonna be a one-click integration directly into Shopify. But for now, and why this plugin's still new and needs to be approved by the Shopify team, we need to go into our Shopify dashboard to grab just a couple of details. So let's go to our Shopify dashboard and you'll notice we already have a bunch of products already set up. Now, the first thing we need is our online store public URL. So I'll just preview this here and you'll notice I've got my store here and we'll copy this link. We'll go back to Framer and we'll publish that here. Now the next thing we need is our storefront API access token. So let's go back to our Shopify site and let's search for build custom apps. And we'll press on this. Now what I'm gonna do is create an app. And again, we can call this whatever we want. I'm just gonna call this my Framer connection. And we'll add that as an app. Once that's done, you wanna to go to configure storefront API scopes. And this is going to allow us to read certain data from your Shopify store so we can display it inside of Framer. Now this is extremely important that you get this right. So what we need to tick is unauthenticated write checkouts and unauthenticated read checkouts. We also want unauthenticated read product listings and unauthenticated read product inventory. So just make sure you have those four selected. Very important. Let's go ahead and save this. And now you can go and install this app. Once that's done, go to your API credentials and you'll notice we now have this storefront API access token. Now it's best practice to not share this with anyone. Now we store it securely, so you don't have to worry about that. But just copy this link here, go back to your Framer project and just paste it in and click on connect your Shopify store. And now click on import products. And now it's importing all our products into Framer. And just like that, you can see all my products here. Now let's say I make an update to one of my products inside of Shopify or even add a new product. The only thing you really need to do here is go back into Framer and make sure you press on sync. And that way it will sync any updates later on. Okay, now that my Shopify is connected to Framer, here comes the fun part, actually building our website. So I'll go back to the canvas here and what I'll actually do is create a new page. Now, since my Shopify is linked to the Framer CMS, I'm gonna create a new CMS page here for the collection of my store and let's create a detail page. And you'll see it's already started to pull in all the data, but since I like a clean canvas, let's just get rid of that stuff for now. And let's go back to our home page here and just add a couple of my existing components. Okay, so this is pretty boring so far. Okay, so this is looking pretty boring so far, but let's go ahead and make this a little bit more fun. So let's go back to plugins and let's open the Frameship plugin. And now if we press on build, we can add a section or even a specific component. My recommendation, if you're just starting out, just to understand how things work, is to start with our sections because they have everything you need already in place. So for example, here for my product page, I can add our product page component and I'll drag that onto the canvas. 
Now this is good, but obviously we need to sync our data. Now, because this is a CMS detail page, essentially we can sync our content here on the canvas directly to our CMS, which is our Shopify data. So if I select the title here, go down to the little plus next to content, you notice I can set that variable to anything within my CMS. But since this is a title, it would make sense to make it the title. Even our product category here, we could set the content to match the product type. Now, one of the things to note for a lot of the fields that's actually pulling in a lot of the live data, whether it be the variance, the price, or even the add to cart button, you notice that we actually need to connect our Shopify data field. Now, this is a little bit manual, but in order to make our components functional, this is really important that we do. So let's say for our pricing component here, we just wanna make sure that where it says Shopify data, that this is connected to, well, our Shopify data. And now you'll see it starts to pull in that information. Even for our inventory level, if I set that to Shopify data, it's gonna pull that in correctly. Same with the variance here. So we'll set that to be Shopify data. And we also need to set the variant options to be variant options. Same with our quantity inputs here. We just wanna set that to be Shopify data. Same with the add to cart. And you get the idea. You just need to make sure that all these components are actually linked properly. So it actually is connected and will actually work. Okay, so let's check this out. Let's go to another page. And now you'll start to see that all my content is actually starting to sync across, which looks awesome. All right, so if I publish this website now, and if we go to this web page, you'll notice nothing happens when I press add to cart because we haven't actually added our cart component yet. But if I press on buy now, you notice it will instantly take me to the checkout directly inside of Shopify so someone can actually buy what I'm selling. So lastly, let's go ahead and add our cart component. So I'll go back and open the Frameship plugin, go to build and open our cart component here. Okay, great. Now what I'm gonna do is actually just drag this into my nav bar here and we can get rid of this placeholder for now. Now you notice if I preview this and if I press on that cart icon, it opens up my cart. Now you'll notice this cart is actually a component. So if I double click this and click unlink this instance, you'll find everything that we need. Now we have the icon here, which I can customize, and this is linked to the cart component itself. Now inside this frame here called cart, you'll notice we have cart product list, which is synced to our cart list item and also a state for when there is no items inside our cart. Again, we can customize these as much as we want. But really, the only thing we need to do inside our cart is actually sync it to our collection. So what I'm going to do is go to the plus at the top left, and we're going to go down to collections, and we're going to drag in a new collection list for my store. And I'm going to make sure this sits outside of everything else. Now, if I open my cart products list component here and go down to the component settings, I'm just going to select the collection to be my stores. So now you can see it's syncing to that collection. So now if I go back to my home here and if we publish an update, great, now let's try this. I'm gonna add an extra item here and let's go add to cart. And you'll notice it now adds that item to my cart. Then if I press on checkout, it takes me directly to my checkout. Now, if I wanna power up my store even more, I could add variant buttons, a product list, even an image gallery. Or if I click on components, you'll notice all the components that you might want to use throughout your website. But like any other framer site, you can customize this however you want. And all you need to do is make sure you add these functional components to actually make your e-commerce website work. And that's how you build an e-commerce website inside a framer with zero code. I'll leave a link down below to the Frameship plugin on the marketplace so you can check it out and try it for yourself. And if you want more Framer tutorials like this, consider subscribing to the channel because in 2025, we're putting out a whole lot of new Framer tutorials. But until next time, I'll catch you later.